Welcome. I am so glad you are here. My name is Jen Conlon, and I work down at the Foss Waterway Seaport here in downtown Tacoma in the Museum District. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm going to be asking you guys a lot of questions today. So follow along and try to answer my questions. I know you're not here in person in live, but you can still shout out the answers to your TV if you want. Great. All right, let me first start by playing you a video. This is Kayla and she's here at the seaport to tell you a little bit more about our building and what we do here. My name is Kayla Ariano, and I am coming to you from the beautiful Foss Waterway Seaport. Foss Waterway Seaport building is 121 years old. It used to store wheat back in the day. Wheat was brought in by rail on the railroad, and then it was shipped out on the other side of the building by sail. The Foss Waterway Seaport acknowledges that our facility is specifically so is be on. on the traditional homeland of the Puyallup tribe of Indians. Yeah. Past and yeah. present. So when they we honor it, with gratitude the land itself and the Puyallup it, tribe. So this acknowledgement does not take the place of authentic relationships with indigenous communities, but serves as a first step in honoring the land we are on. We will make intentional efforts to create inclusive and respectful partnerships that honor indigenous cultures, histories, identities, and socio-political realities. We also have a moral responsibility to fully acknowledge our indigenous connections, as well as critically reflect on the histories of dispossession and forced removal that have allowed for the growth and survival of our institution. Let us continue to advocate for and partner with our indigenous neighbors as we continue our lifelong work together as a dynamic and inclusive community. In case you haven't been here before, I'm gonna show you around. This is our touch tank area. Ooh. <gasps> and this is our classroom exploration area. And look at this cool yearling humpback whale skeleton. These are your coho salmon. You're gonna be learning a lot more about them coming in April. Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> this is our North Hall. It's filled with a bunch of different kinds of boats. And the North Wall is entirely made of windows. All right. So what are we doing today? Today, I'm going to talk to you about these awesome science kits that we sent to your school. So if you haven't picked it up, find out how to pick it up from your school. I am going to help you get started with setting up your project. And I'm gonna walk you through your science journals and tell you a little bit about how you can communicate with us. So the first question, what is in the bag. So if you have your bag, grab it now and let's explore. First thing to do is open it up and we'll dump everything out. Now don't throw away this bag. I mean, I know a lot of times you get things mailed to you and it comes in the mail and you get stuff and you go, okay, throw that away. We need this bag. This is called a beaker bag. It is like a science beaker has measurements on it. So we're gonna use this. We can't mail you a glass beaker in the mail. So you're gonna use your bag as your container. Also inside are some colorful instructions. These bags have animals that can live up to 10,000 years old in it. That's, that's a little teaser. I'll tell you more about that. But this is a baggie that says salts and cysts. So I'll tell you what those cysts are. And here's a tube of green stuff. Elle's with me here today. What is this green stuff you think? Do you know? Any ideas? No ideas? All right, well, it kind of gives it away a little bit on the tube, but this is a tube of algae. 
very green. Yours might not look this green and that's okay. We also have a magnifying glass to see stuff up close. And there's a ruler with a target on the end. That target is called a secchi disc. And we drop that in water to see how far we can see. So this secchi stick helps us measure how far we can see in the water. And you'll learn more about how to use it to take measurements in some of our videos. Okay, so that's everything that's in the bag. Why are we sending you all this random stuff? So scientists, I'm a scientist. I've traveled all around the world to go observe organisms in their natural environment. But sometimes we collect organisms and we bring them into our labs. Like here, we have some aquaria in our touch tanks and, and we have touch tanks and we bring organisms into the aquaria to live and we can observe them interacting with other organisms. So we sent you all of this stuff. So you get to make your own labs at home where you can observe a couple different types of organisms. All right, so let's take a look at what we sent you. If you couldn't see me holding up everything, here's what you get. The bag, the algae, secchi stick, instructions, magnifying glass. Oh, and a little, that's a good thing. We have, it looks like a little eyedropper. It is called a pipette and that's used to take samples and squeeze up a little bit of water or any liquid. So why are we doing this? Here, you'll see a video of those touch tanks that Kayla showed you. These are here at the Fosswaterway Seaport. And here's a close up inside one of those touch tanks. What do you think this red stuff could be? Have you ever seen this before at the beach maybe? Seen anything that looks like this? Oh, you've seen some things? I've seen something that looks like this. It's kind of leafy and it's red. These are in our touch tanks. There's a couple other organisms I'm gonna show you. Maybe you've seen this on the beach before or something that looks like this leaves with these little air pockets. Have you seen anything like that? These are different types of seaweed, right? So this is a red algae and this is in our touch tank and seaweed is an algae. So this is one type of algae. The green algae here, this is, this is an ulva. You might see this on the beach. This is commonly known as See lettuce, does it look like lettuce? Yeah, these are all different types of algae. So what is algae? Well, algae, you know, we said this tube of green liquid is algae, but does that look leafy? Or, you know, does it look like this? You know, it, it, these, this is brown and the other one was red. I mean, they look really different. So if there's all these different ways that algae can look, what is it that, unites them all as one group. Well, algae are plants that grow in the water. So that's what it is. They're, they're, it's a broad term for plants that grow in the water. And there's something special that plants can do that other things can't. What is unique to plants? What can they use for food? All right, I'm gonna take a minute you can think about it. Let's see, if we go outside 
and we hold our arms up to the sun. Can we get food? Can we eat breakfast like that? No, no, we would just get a sunburn, right? But plants can use the sunlight to make food. And that has a specific name. And you maybe already know photosynthesis. Have you, you know photosynthesis, Al? Yeah, you know photosynthesis. So that is unique to plants. They use sunlight to make food and that makes them a producer. They produce food from sunlight energy. So let's see, what other types of organisms? I told you I was sending you two different types of organisms. So we have some producers, primary producers, and let's look at some different types of what we call consumers. These are some, all found in our touch tanks. This is a leather sea star. They're a consumer. This is a type of barnacle. There's a barnacle with its little feelers extended out into the water. And if you've ever seen a barnacle, do they look like animals? Do they look like an animal, Elle? Not really, they kind of look like a little hard rock, don't they? But they actually have two little shells that open up when they're in the water and feeding and they stick out these little look finger like things and they get filter stuff out of the water and they eat it so they yeah they eat stuff out of the water they are animals there's another close-up of a barnacle some barnacles more barnacles with their feelers out there this is a rose star and the other one was a six arm star but i'm going to pause right here and show you these neat little consumers I love these guys. These are called nudibranchs and they are on this rock here. Do you see how they're, they're crawling around the rock? They're sea slugs and they come in lots of different colors. And then these hard ones with these plates on them, so they're chitin and those are, they're, they're stuck to the rock here and they move around the rocks and they scrape something off of the rocks. What do you think they scraped off of the rocks? I know you can't talk to me, but they scrape algae, green algae off those rocks. Those are some nice, clean, algae-free rocks, right? So they are eating the algae off of those rocks. All right, so what kind of animals could we be sending you in these kits? Uh, I'm kind of giving it away here, a hint. I already told you these animals can live 10,000 years old. That's, how do they do that, I wonder? Well, these are brine shrimp and brine shrimp live in really salty, salty uh, and environments. And those were the brine shrimp that we had here at, at the seaport. Well, they can live in like an egg stage that goes into kind of hibernation. It's called a cyst. And that's what you see that, that word starting with a C and a Y cyst on that baggie. There's brine shrimp cysts in here. And those brine shrimp cysts will hatch in your bag once they're in a good environment. And a good environment for a brine shrimp is some salty water with some food like algae. And so brine shrimp eat algae. That makes them a consumer. So can animals eat sunlight? Can they eat sunlight, Elle? Can an animal eat, you can eat sunlight? What do you think? No, we can't eat sunlight, right? No, but do we get energy from sunlight? You were on the right track there. Yeah, we do. We still get energy from sunlight. We just have to eat a primary producer that makes food from sunlight. All right, so, that means that these organisms have to interact in our bag. Our brine shrimp have to eat our algae and the algae, they grow and get energy from light. That makes this a mini ecosystem in a bag. Uh, ecosystem, that's a big word. So ecosystem, 
what are some examples of an ecosystem? Well, a one ecosystem that I used to do a lot of work on is a coral reef and an ecosystem that is all the organisms that live in an environment and the environment itself. So a coral reef has fish and corals and algae and lots of different organisms interacting in one environment, which is the reef. So that makes it an ecosystem. But if you wanna study those, you can bring them in the lab, in a controlled environment, like our beaker bag, and study a mini ecosystem in a bag. So let me share a little video clip from our experts to tell you more about that ecosystem. in the Tacoma Public Schools. What's so cool about this project is that it's a self-sustaining ecosystem that can last for a year without even being fed. To tell you more about it, let me introduce you to two awesome scientists. Hi, my name is Matt Huber and I own a small company in San Diego, California called Algae Research and Supply. We're here because we really firmly believe that you guys and everybody out there needs to learn about growing algae, it's responsible for half of the Earth's photosynthesis. And so I've dedicated my lab and my life to really getting this out there so that everybody can, can uh, uh, get their hands on some algae. The students get to see step-by-step -step processes detailing how to do the experiment at home. But yeah, they're growing and on the bottom you can really see that they're also growing. What's really cool about this is it's a completely enclosed ecosystem. So the algae feeds the brine shrimp, and when the brine shrimp poop and die, they get recycled by the bacteria and fungus, which in turn remineralizes the nutrients and feeds the algae. This is such a great thing that this cycle will keep going around and around and around forever, and you could become a, a brine shrimp grandparent. Hey, and speaking of brine shrimp, here's Jamie to tell you a little bit more. You're a brine shrimp biologist, and so I'm really, really, really excited to send to these brine shrimp and to see them hatching all the way in Washington really interesting because I get to see them grow and I get to see the algae grow in a bag. Okay, so you get to grow your own brine shrimp in these bags and they have everything they need. You don't need to add any food because they can eat the algae and we're going to use these bags to make observations and measurements and uh, see how the ecosystem interacts. All right, so I hope you're thinking to yourself, well, that sounds awesome. When do we get started? What, wh when do I start? Well, do you have your bags? Do you have your kits? If you do, and your teacher says it's okay, you can get started as soon as you're not in class. If you don't have your kit yet, you got to go get your kit first, and then you can get started either right away or whenever your teacher assigns it. So if your teacher has assigned you to get started, you're good to go. So now let's set it up together. Let's do it, let's do it. This, all right, this is my favorite part. Now that you've emptied out everything and you've kept your bag, I'm gonna take my mask off to show you how to do this. All right, Elle, I need you to puff your cheeks up really big, like a puffer fish, okay. All right, I'm gonna move my microphone a little bit. Now, see these bags, they kind of get stuck at the bottom. So you open it up and puff up that air and Okay, blow up your bag all the way so that the corners are all the way open. Now, we are going to fill, here's my little orca. Thank you, little orca. We're going to fill up our bags. Remember, it is a beaker, like a beaker, so it has measurements on it. And in the instruction sheet, it tells you how high to fill up your water we're gonna go to about 450 milliliters, which is the second to the top line. But if you're between that and the top one, the video, some of the videos might say to fill to 500, that's okay too. But you'll record that in your log. I'll show you in a little bit. So where are we gonna get our water? Well, we're gonna get our water from the sink. You can fill it up, 450 milliliters. So everything you need is in the kit except for water. So you fill it up. Now this, I'm gonna stop 
right now. This is the most important thing. So stop. Don't do anything else. Most important. Only thing you need to know about today. Do not add anything else in this bag. Where do we get our water? Well, we get our water coming through our pipes from a water treatment facility, right? So if the water is in the environment and maybe there's some algae growing in that water, do we wanna drink that algae? Elle, do you wanna drink that? No, we don't wanna drink that. So if you are getting your water from your sink, it's going to have some stuff in there that they put in so that we wouldn't drink any algae. And that is called chlorine. Elle, have you been to a pool before? Yes. If you guys have ever been to a pool, you might have smelled that smell. Does a pool have a funny smell to it? That's chlorine. And they put that in the pool so that it doesn't grow any algae. Well, that chlorine leaves the water and, that, and you can smell it. And they have to keep adding more to it. Well, if we leave our bag open for a while, all the chlorine will leave the water. And so we need to leave this water for two days. What will happen to our algae if we add it too early? If we add it on the first day to the bag, what will happen to it? It will not live, it will die. So you need to wait two days and that's in the instructions. And if you can, you know, I know you guys might have little brothers and sisters. Al, do you have any siblings? And any pets? Do you have any pets running around your house? Yeah, would they knock over an open bag maybe? They might, some cats I know like to knock over bags. So you might need to find a safe place you can keep it for a couple days for as long as you can leave it open so that all that chlorine comes out. Well, now let's pretend we're on day three. So what do you do on day two? Nothing, don't do anything, don't add anything. Day three, we are going to really get set up. So we're gonna just use our imagination and pretend it's been two days that this water sat out. And then we're gonna get start first with our bag of salt because this algae likes to live in salt water. So the next thing we're gonna do is add salt. Okay, my salt looks a little clumpy, but that's okay. I close it, shake it all up. All right, now I have salt water. And now I can add my whole tube of algae to the bag. And I will then also shake it. And this is shake it is something you can do every day to make sure that algae doesn't stick to the bottom of the bag. And then if you can find a place to put it, you can put it inside of a tray or something, make sure it doesn't leak. But if you can leave it open for as long as you can, that'll help with what we call gas exchange. So your next question should be, where do I put it? Well, what? let's think about what does algae need to live? We already talked about it a little bit earlier. They need sunlight, needs light, right? So when we grow algae in a lab, a lot of times we use lamps, we use light bulbs. I can see a light bulb up there. So you can put it on a desk next to a desk lamp light bulb. And I think that's in our instructions. Can put it next to a light bulb. But if you don't have that kind of lamp, if you're saying, Jen, I just don't have any desk lamps. All my, all my lights are, are in the ceiling. Well, we can put it in a window and it can get sunlight through the window. The only thing is that this algae and brine shrimp like to have a warm place to live. So if you can put it in one of the warmer places in your house with light, that's the best. So you want to balance that light, have enough light and be warm. A lamp will often give up. The light bulb will make it warm. And as long as it's not hot to the touch, you should be okay. And if you put it in a window, sometimes it can get very cool um, outside. So the window might get cold. So if you can have it in a warmer room, in, in the warmest room you can find in your house, that would be the best. All right. So now we are set up. And 
ready to talk about our journal and what you're going to do with it. So let me share um, my screen again so we can see those pages. This is the first page of your science journal. It's your checklist. And this is everything you need to get started with the project and follow us from week to week. You're only going to have one live meeting. The rest is going to be in recorded set uh, videos. So pick up your kit, check, watch this video. Now I've, I will either meet with students live or this is our recorded kickoff. And there will be a pre-assessment uh, loaded up on our website. And I hope it will be in Schoology for you as well. Watch our setup video and do a vocabulary worksheet. You'll see that in a minute. Set up project, begin daily log, check. And remember on day three is where you add your salt census. Week two, there will be more videos with worksheets that go along with it. And remember to keep shaking your bag. Okay. So first, let me show you the log. T today, or whenever day you actually pour your water in, is your day one. And you want to record that date. Here is where you write your water level. So write the instructions, say 450. Uh, one of our setup videos might say 500. If you whatever you filled it to you got to write it here but try to be close to that 450 or 500. some if you leave it open some of the water might evaporate out and if you fill it up this far you'll have enough to last you the whole project if you knock it over or if you see some of the water you know evaporating out just don't add any more water okay so if you add more water there's two things that could go wrong you could uh, the, the water does not have any salt and that water will have chlorine. So you don't want to do that. Just let it evaporate. Here in those first couple of days, you want to check that your bag is open so the chlorine can off gas. And here you can make some observations those days. All right, so what do we do day two? Do not have anything. Day three, you want to write the day you start. And now you'll have some observations you could make about the water color and remember to open and shake that bag so you let the gases out and well shake it when it's closed that would be a mess and open it to leave let the bag change now we talked about the brine shrimp are here in this kit in cysts waiting until it's a good environment well once we add them to the water they could hatch they probably won't hatch the first day but then you should be looking for them. You can use your magnifying glass because they'll be very small when they first hatch. You might not even see them until you hold them up to the light or use your magnifying glass. So keep watching that to see if you can see any brine shrimp swimming around in your bag in that first week or so. All right, there'll be new observations to make with week two and week three. And those will be all up here on the headers and will be in your worksheets that you need to do to go with the activities that week. When you've finished, there were a lot of questions about what to do with them. Can I, can I put them in a saltwater tank? What can I do? You can when you're done the project. Until you're finished, it needs to stay in your beaker bag so you can make the observation. All right, our first worksheet this week is our vocabulary worksheet. And this vocabulary, the vocabulary worksheet you should be able to get done after watching this video and the setup video. We've talked about some of these already, and then the rest will be in our subsequent videos. We will do more with energy flow and you will use that Secchi stick, learn how to use it before you need to take observations in week two. You will take measurements with your Secchi stick and graph that and there will be videos to support those worksheets. 
you'll do a food web worksheet. You'll also learn more about the life cycle of brine shrimp and learn more about what brine shrimp look like. So here's my, my little brine shrimp friend. And he's got some little swimmerettes and things and legs and eyes. And you'll learn all about that in week three. There'll be a worksheet where you have to take samples just like a real scientist and figure out how many brine shrimp are in your bag. You can do some drawing if you like to draw. And then there's some optional activities at the end if you want to do more with your brine shrimp. All right, so the last thing I'm going to tell you about is how to communicate with us. This is a really neat website that we've set up that you can ask us questions and make your own videos. And we wanna hear from you. It's called Flipgrid. And if you don't, if you've never heard about it, it's flipgrid.com. L, have you used Flipgrid before? Yes, okay, good. So you might know, maybe you've seen some videos like this. Well, you have a join code for Flipgrid. It is lowercase b, lowercase b, and then your school name just for this project. It's for BB, stands for Brainy Briny. And it will be the, the first name of your school. So if your school is Arlington Elementary, it will be BB Arlington, all in lowercase. And that's how you can get to the group that will have lots of topics where we ask you some questions or maybe you ask us your questions. Okay, so let's hear from some students that we piloted with in the fall. Hi, I'm Ariah Kendrick, and I am here to talk about my brine trip. So, um, I have a question about the brine trip. Is, um, I, my, my name is Bridget, and so I was wondering, should we be shaking the bag every single day? Day. Some of them I shake every day, some of them I don't. And you'll notice that the ones I don't have a lot of algae on the bottom. How big can a brine shrimp get? The brine shrimp eat each other. So you can see they're about half an inch long. Um, that's about as big as they get. They, they do get bigger. You know, their size depends on how healthy they are. Uh, brine shrimp, they produce a whole bunch of babies, hundreds of them, in the hopes that maybe just one or two to replace the parent. This is your opportunity to get in on a fun, self-guided, easy experiment that enriches lives. I'm so honored to be part of your experience and learning while you're in fifth grade out there. And if you guys understand how to use algae to remove CO2 from the atmosphere, you will be the ones to change the planet. And so I hope that some of you are gonna be really excited about growing these um, brine shrimp and, and seeing how they change in their little brainy briny bag and hope that it maybe inspires some of you to be an algae scientist or a brine shrimp scientist. And, and I really look forward to seeing how you save the world. So bye. Okay, well, I hope you guys are excited to start this project. Um, in the chat, I'm going to write a couple of websites that you will need if you wanna access our videos. So first of all, uh, there's our website here at fosswaterwayseaport.org slash brainy hyphen briny. And that will get you to the videos that you need to complete your worksheets. You can also probably get them from emailed out from your teacher. They'll be on our YouTube channel on FOSS Waterway Education. And I talked about Flipgrid and join code BB, your school name, okay? All right, 
So I hope you guys are excited to start. Please, when we open back up, we'd love to see you here at um, the seaport down in downtown Tacoma in the museum district. And we might have a special treat just for you fifth graders uh, with your brainy briny kits. When you're finished, we are going to invite you down and you can bring them to us to put into our touch tanks. We will send you a flyer with all that information of when you can do that, but we can't wait to hear from you on Flipgrid and see all your brine shrimp growing in your home laboratories. Bye.